We're starting section two of chapter nine. So please write this in your notebook. So write the title, 9.2, Lines of Best Fit. So in section 9.1, we learned how to make a scatter plot. So to that scatter plot, we're now going to add our lines of best fit. So write down the next bit of notes. What is a line of best fit? A line of best fit is drawn on a scatter plot. We know how to do those. The numbers are close to the data points, but do not need to pass through any of those data points. So we're not connecting the dots. We're making our best fit line. And we're using that to estimate the data. So you're writing this down in your notebook. If I go too fast, please pause the video. If you need to hear something again, you can rewind the video. And when you're ready to move on, just hit play. So here I have a line of best fit. You do not need to write this down, but this shows you visually what the line of best fit looks like. So all the X's are the data points, so you see all the data points, and we're going to just put the best line in between all those data points, and as you notice, not a single one of those data points crosses our line of best fit. But we're going to use that to kind of estimate our data. So go ahead and write this down. A linear regression is the same thing as our lot, the best fit line. So you don't need to draw the picture. But if you look at this, we've kind of done this in the past. So here's our graph. We have our y-axis. We have our x-axis. We have all the data points. Here we have our best fit line, which now we're going to call our linear regression. Linear meaning a line. And this can then help us to predict what our next data point might be. And we've also done this down here in the bottom. Once we have that line, we can write an equation for our line where we have y equals mx plus b. Of course, they have to use other things. But we can use that to help us with our line. So maybe write that down in our notes. So our best fit line equals the linear regression and the equation for our line. So equation for our line is y equals mx plus b. Remember b is our y-intercept. m is our slope. And x and y are our two data points. Again, if I'm going too fast, pause the video. If you need to hear something again, you can rewind the video, and when you're ready to move on, go ahead and hit play. If you have a question or something you need answered, go ahead and write that on the side of your notebook, and then you can look at your notes tomorrow and ask that question. So with our line of best fit, we can also look for a correlation coefficient, and what is that? Well, that indicates if the slope of the line is negative or positive. So if it's a positive R, it's going to be a positive relationship. And if it's a negative R, it's, of course, going to be a negative relationship. So remember, positive increases and negative will decrease. And this correlation coefficient also indicates how close the data points are to your best fit line. So you should be writing this all down in your notes. And here we need to write this bottom part down. So this shows us if we have a strong relationship, a weak relationship, or another strong relationship. So if our number is close to negative 1, it's a very strong negative correlation. If our number is 0, there's a very weak correlation or close to 0, meaning that our line doesn't really fit with the data points. And if our number is positive one. That means we have a very strong positive correlation. And again, we're going to practice using these in the next couple slides. Please write down these notes. So here is how we're going to find our best fit line. So here's example one. We've already done this, but it's good to put this in our notes. So first you're going to plot your data points. So um, you're going to do your x and your y coordinates and you're going to plot those data points that you have. You're going to make your best fit line using all the data points, except we're not going to use those outliers. You're going to write an equation for your line, and remember, we're going to use y equals mx plus b, which we've learned how to do in the past. If we need to refresh that, we can do that tomorrow during class. But this is the important part. 
we do not use the data points, but we use the line to find the slope and the y-intercept. So again, we're going to practice these. If I go too fast, pause the video. If you need to rewind to hear something again, go ahead and rewind. And if you still have something that's confusing or you don't understand, write yourself a side note so we can go over that tomorrow during class. Okay, so we're going to practice making a scatter plot in our best foot line. We practiced this yesterday in class, so I first need to figure out what's my dependent and what's my independent variable. So I have my x and my y. So I know time is going to be my x, and I know length is going to be my y. So you're writing this down in your notes. So my time goes from 0 to 7, so I'm going to put 0 at the corner. And I'm going to count over 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13. I don't have enough lines to kind of skip, so I'm just going to number them 1 through 7. So I'm going to make my scale for my graph, making sure that each space, either each box, is worth the same amount of points. I can stop after that, after 7. Now my inches need to go from 22 up to about, it looks like about 30. So I need to have at least eight numbers. So I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. So I can't double it. Um, so I'm going to count by one. So I have 22, 23, 24, 25, 26. Sorry, my handwriting is really big. 27, 28, and 29. Okay, so now I'm going to plot my data points. I have 0 and 22. Oops. I have 1 and 22.5. Okay, my pen's not working so well. 22.5. There we go. Close. I have 2 and 23.5. So it's kind of halfway between 23 and 24. 3, I have 25. So I'm going to pause the video. I'm going to add the rest of my data points, and then I'll continue on with the next set of directions. Okay, so now that I have all my data points, I'm actually going to use a ruler, so you're going to need to find your ruler. And I don't need to really line up all the data points, but I need to get kind of enough below and enough above my line. And I'm going to draw my line. Okay, so here's my best fit line. So now I want to come up with my equation for my line of y equals mx plus b. So I'm going to look to see where does this intersect. My y-axis, I know that's my b, so that's going to be 22. And my slope, now I need to look at my line and figure out where it exactly crosses um, the graph paper. So I see one here. I don't see very good ones, so I'm going to go down here to this one. So I'm going to look at rise over run. So I have one, two, three rise, and I have three run. So it looks like my slope is one. So I have y equals, I could put a 1, but I don't need to, x plus 22. So I've made my scatter plot, I have my best fit line, and I now have my equation for my line. Okay, so now I did like we did yesterday, and I actually made a scatter, scatter plot, and I did this in Google Sheets, and look at how much nicer it looks. And here I have my equation for my line, which is close to what I have, but it's probably more accurate here in the computer. So remember, you can choose to either use Google Sheets, you can make a graph by, by hand, or you can use the Desmos program that we have available. Uh, any one of those three is a way that you can graph. Okay, so now you're going to make a scatter plot and a best fit line on your own. Um, so actually, yeah, let's try using graph paper so that I can see it. So just do this in your notebook. So make your graph, your scatter plot, come up with your best fit line, and then I want your equation for your line, and then tomorrow during class we'll practice using Google Spreadsheets again. So we're going to save this slide. We're actually going to use Google Spreadsheets tomorrow during class, and I'm going to show you how to find the best fit line, and how to get that correlation coefficient to see if our line fits with our data points. So hold on to that for tomorrow. Okay, so this last slide is for you to write down any questions you have, anything you need us to practice more of. So this is so that I can see what you need help with.